Senate Squadron did an op-ed piece in the Daily News. And I hope that I slid right in at an appropriate time. I apologize if I kept you all waiting. I, I know this is a particularly, uh, and actually have copies of the op-ed if anyone hasn't seen it. I also wanted to thank uh, Jeff Mandel from uh, New York City, from City Hall, for being here tonight. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think mostly listen, but if you want to just introduce yourself briefly. From City Hall? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and and uh, from, from the mayor's office. Right. I guess City Hall is a more threatening way to say from the mayor's office, which is how you probably normally do. Um, and, and I appreciate uh, Jeff coming and look, this is, you know, this is something where I'm really glad that uh, the mayor's office is listening and taking sort of an approach where they want to sort of understand where folks are coming from since, you know, the sort of, I think that if this were to move forward, the ball would be sort of in, in their court to just to talk further about it. So I, re I really thank you very much for my I know it's hard on, on late notice. So it, it means a lot. I think it means a lot to the community or I don't want to speak to but I, it's, it's a big deal. Um, so here, basically, in the time I've represented Battery Park City, as I think many of you know, I, I've worked hard, as has Speaker Silver, to increase uh, community representation and the community voice uh, on the authority board. And that's uh, sort of without prejudice to you know, the existing board or, or the uh, existing governance structure of Battery Park City Authority, but it's just the idea that as Battery Park City goes from being you know, a development site, an idea to a development site, to a neighborhood, uh, neighborhood representation sort of is increasingly important. I, of course, came into office right as sort of the final sites were uh, getting, getting moved. And so, very pleased uh, uh, that uh, Martha Gallo was uh, appointed and uh, put on the board by the governor. I also, uh, the speaker and I also put forward Anthony's name, as, as I think is, is no secret, and are disappointed that that hasn't happened. And, you know, and, and I think that the fact that it took that kind of time to have a single uh, community representative sort of from, from the universe of folks who are active, and that we were not successful in two, speaks to one of the two things that has come up a lot, which is you know, real sort of guaranteed permanent community representation on the authority board as the authority continues to be really a neighborhood and not a development. Um, and, and I think that's, that's one. And then the other factor, uh, there's, there's really three, the other factor splits into two, but I'll deal them separately, uh, is the extent to which uh, I think the rest of the state uh, and the rest of the city potentially, but certainly the rest of the state, see Battery Park City and Battery Park City Authority as a piggy bank, right? So in, in my first budget, it was proposed to take a couple hundred million dollars just to close the state budget gap. My second uh, year, uh, that, that happened. And you know, the, the idea that sort of periodically uh, Battery Park City Authority funds get used in that way, I don't think makes sense uh, over time. And there's the third, which, and, and, and by the way, especially when you have both in Battery Park City and surrounding in Hudson River Park and elsewhere, you have extraordinarily important community amenities with real funding challenges. And, uh, you know, and, and that could continue over time. So. And then there's the third component, which is the extent to which it's sort of the founding principle of Battery Park City was affordable housing and sort of should be. And so you know, I know something Tom thinks about a lot and, and emails and, and talking is, is, is pushing for. Uh, but I, I see the emails and is pushing for a lot. And others as well. Um, I, I happen to receive those emails. So. Um, but uh, which is the idea that to the extent there are surplus dollars, to the extent there's other things, you know, there is sort of a broader goal both within the authority, within Battery Park City, and in the broader Lower Manhattan community for affordable housing. Those sort of components. And um, there's this sort of potential that exists right now for New York City to uh, exercise an option, a so-called option, to. Uh, change the governance of Battery Park City. Now, when this came up, uh, I guess it was a year ago, or uh, is it a year? It was a slip the summer, the last summer, two summers ago. Um, November 2010. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, it felt like summer to me, I guess. Okay. I, the concerns of the community were very clear, and, and sort of this is, you know, around that option. And it was because there was a fear that option would be the opposite of the three things that I just talked about, right? And so I think that it's very clear, and I think that, uh, frankly, this, the city heard very clearly at that point, the speaker and myself and Margaret Chen all saying, look, these are the priorities and sort of the next steps if there's going to be a change in structure. But there's no reason, uh, sort of on its face, that that 
cost of that sort of opportunity for the change of structure couldn't be used to create a structure that did some of these things that are being talked about. And it's sort of, that's it. That, that was sort of the op-ed. That was sort of the founding concept of it, where that permanent community representation, uh, you know, really ensuring that the state especially doesn't use it as sort of a statewide piggy bank when the budgets are hard, especially when there are amenities in deep need. And that there is this founding promise around affordability and affordable housing. We have a deep need of it in Battery Park City, deep need of it in Lower Manhattan, deep need of it in New York City. Uh, it, it, the existence of this option is a good point, good time to have conversations about what our priorities are here in the community. And if there's interest in those priorities being moved forward, wonderful. And if not, what we have now, and you know, and, and, you know, again, I say, you know, I think that that the chairman, the current chairman, the current executive director doing a commendable job and I work well with them. It's not about this administration. It's about an overall structure and if that overall structure can be improved from the perspective of the residents and the perspective of the goals I talked about, that seems worth uh, at least having a conversation about. And that's really, frankly, as far as, as my thinking has gone, that's sort of what my habit is. And again, there are copies that people want to see, but I don't know if, you have, if folks want to sort of Talk about this a little bit, or yeah, I, I, I think yes. we should have a um, the state senator, the assembly person, of the council member, uh, of the borough president, and then that one because of a bunch of sort of history has three gubernatorial appointees, which is why it ended up so big. Mm -hmm. So if you hadn't had the gubernatorial appointees on there, you would have six mayoral and then the other or five mayoral and the other four. Governor's Island, similarly, you know, which is which is in Community Board One and is part of the Community Board, um, and which the the speaker has an appointment to. And I have an appointment to uh, the state senator does, and the assembly person does, uh, and the community board does, and then there's a, a city majority on that as well. So you know, in both cases, you have sort of a majority that you know it's it's, it's in city hall, not in the state capital, but it's a similar sort of executive that has a majority. But you have defined minority, uh, a defined set of seats for sort of the most local structure that can be figured out. In the case of the community board. Yes, Governor's Island, there's not a community board in the case of Brooklyn Park, but there's a borough president. So it's just some different I mean, sort of ways that it's done. In terms of the dollars, you know, it, it's very hard to protect dollars from the state. It's, it's a state, in my experience. I mean, fought for MTA dollars and having fought this uh, sweep as well. So. So, 